Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at equity related ratios. There's no such thing as equity related ratios. I made up this name just to let you know that we are dealing with stocks. And those ratios will be earnings per share, EPS, dividend yield, and price earning ratio, PE ratio. These topics are typically covered in inter inter introductory accounting course, intermediate accounting, as well introduction to finance. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including many CPA questions. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them. It doesn't cost you anything. Subscribe to the channel, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people, share the wealth, connect with me on Instagram and on my website, you will have additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, true, false, multiple choice exercises if you are preparing for your CPA exam. Let's start with the first ratio, which is earnings per share. And this ratio is one of the most quoted ratios in accounting as well as finance. So if you watch CNBC, if you read the Wall Street Journal, if you watch Bloomberg TV, Earnings per share is constantly thrown out as a measurement for the company's performance. So let's first understand how do we compute earnings per share and what does it mean? Because once we compute earnings per share, we're going to be using this number to compute another important number, the next ratio, which is price earnings ratio. So how do we compute earnings per share? Simply put, let's assume you own a business. Let's assume it's a pizzeria. So you have a restaurant. Okay, and you sell pizza every year. Your revenue is a million. Your expenses are 400,000. You make a profit of 600,000. Now we're going to call this your net income. That's it. And guess what? For this company, you own the pizzeria 100%. You sell pizza and you own this pizzeria. And for this pizzeria, you happen to have you know, you issued for this pizzeria 100 shares. So you own 100 shares and those 100 shares represent 100% ownership because you own 100% of this pizzeria. Now I can compute for you your earnings per share. What is your earnings? 600,000. That's your earnings. How many shares do you have? 100 shares. Therefore, if I take 600,000, distribute those $600,000 through to your, if I distribute the 600,000 profit to 100 shares, I take out those two zeros and your EPS, your earnings per share is $6,000. Simply put, you own all the shares and for every share, if you take the earnings and distribute it theoretically to every share, your earnings per share is 6,000. Now, do you want your earnings per share to be higher? Of course, you want your earnings per share to be higher. But this is basically what it is. You take the earnings of the company and theoretically you distribute it to the shares outstanding. Now, the proper formula is this. And we're going to be only dealing with basic earnings per share. Why basic? Because we have basic earnings per share and we have another computation called diluted earnings per share. We don't cover diluted earnings per share. If you are interested in diluted, please go to my intermediate accounting. I have four different, four different lectures about diluted earnings per share. It's beyond the scope of a financial accounting course. It's an intermediate accounting. So the way we compute basic earnings per share is we take the net income for our example was 600,000 minus preferred stock, preferred dividend, sorry, we're going to assume we have no preferred dividend, divided by the weighted average common shares outstanding. Now, also to compute this weighted average, there's a way to compute this, but for our purposes, we're going to assume the weighted average is 100 shares. So we had 100 shares from the beginning of the year till the end of the year. So this is how we compute this. Now for large companies like GE or Microsoft or Apple or Google, what's going to happen is this. We're dealing with millions or not, if not billions of dollars. So let's assume the company's net income. Just let's keep it simple. One million dollar. They have no preferred dividend and the weighted average uh, common shares is a million. We say that earnings per share is a hundred dollars. So the EPS is a hundred dollar. Now what's neat, what's cool about the EPS 
is once you compute the EPS for one company, you compute the EPS for company A, you could compare the EPS between company A and company B. So if company A is a dollar, company B is dollar fifty, you are better off holding a stock in company B because company B share earns per share more than company A. So basically, it doesn't matter what, whether you are making 100, 100 million, 100 billion, it doesn't matter. Once you compute this earnings per share, it doesn't matter if company A has 100 million in income and company B only 10 million. Now we can, now we can compare them and sh show based on one share which one earns more. So that's 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 why this ratio is powerful. It let you it let you compare different companies of different earning power based on one share, and this is what you care. If you own a share in a company, you want the company to earn as much as possible per share. You don't care about your total net income. If my if the total net income is one hundred million or one hundred billion, okay. Which one do you prefer? I don't care which one I prefer. I prefer that one that's going to give me the more earnings per share. If you have 100 billion and you have 200 billion shares, then you're going to get 50 cents per earning earnings per share. But if you have 100 million in income and only 100 million shares, then your earnings per share is a dollar. So that's why what we care about is earnings per one individual share. So earnings per share, it's going to take us to another important computation, and that's price earnings ratio. So this is one of my favorite ratio. I can spend one hour if I want to about this ratio, one, more than one hour, a few hours, but at least I can spend one hour, I won't do so, uh, explaining how this PE ratio work, but I won't do that. So let's talk about let's talk about this. This ratio reveals information about the stock market expectation for a company's future earnings, dividend, and opportunities. So let's see how it's computed. Then we'll try to explain what it what it's trying to reveal to us. Okay. So the PE ratio is basically it's where basically what I say where finance and accounting meet. Remember we just learned about EPS and this number is an accounting number and I just showed you how to compute EPS which is net income minus preferred shares divided by the weighted average number of shares. And let's for the sake of illustration our earnings per share is a dollar and the market value per share this is a finance or let's not call it a finance let's call let's call it a market and let's call it finance too. A finance number who determines the market value per share the market and this is basically what finance people look at so let's just throw a number out there and let's throw a number of 15 okay so let's assume we have we have a stock where it has a market value of $15 and the company is earning a dollar well 15 divided by a dollar equal to 15 now what does this 15 means 15 15 what does that 15 means it's it's called price earnings ratio what does it mean well it means the following it means the stock you are paying 15 dollars for each one dollar in earnings per share so simply put what does that mean it means for every one dollar per share for every one dollar per share the, the investors are paying $15 per share. Well, let's see. Is this a lot? Is this not a lot? Is this expensive? Is this cheap? What does that mean? What does it $15 per share mean? Well, it all depends. It all depends on, if you, on your future expectation about the company. Let's go back to that pizzeria that I talked about earlier. Let's assume this is your pizzeria and you're earning $1 per share. Well, if your pizza if your pizzeria if let's assume let's assume a, a new highway and a large new highway it's going to be constructed in your area where that pizzeria is and two three large corporation will be opening opening offices in your area then guess what you have opportunities what does that mean it means if you are if you are earning one dollar per share now if you're earning one dollar per share now guess what in the future you might be earning two or three dollar per share well if that's the case if that's the case and you are paying for every dollar in earnings fifteen dollar it means your stock price should be worth thirty it means if you are earning two three 
3 divided by 2, your price should be worth 30 if you are earning $2 per share, and the P-E ratio is 15. So if you think you should pay $15 for a pizza place, 15 not $15. If you think you should be paying $15 for every dollar in earnings and your earnings going to go up, it means if you're going to be earning $2, your stock price should be worth 30. So simply put, if the future is good, if you think you're going to be earning more, and that's why your earning drives your stocks. Let me change pen here. So the, mo the more earnings you have. So for example, let's assume for pizzeria, just that for the pizzeria industry, let's just take this as an example. We assume, this is just an assumption, that we should pay 15 times for every dollar per share. So if you have a pizzeria and earning $1, then you should pay, then the stock price should be 15. That's a fair price. So again, if we should pay $15 for every $15 for every dollar in your for pizzeria business, and this pizzeria earn $2 per share, then the price of the market should be 30. Again, if we think we should pay $15 for a pizzeria and you earn $3 per share, then your stock price should be worth $45. So the price earnings ratio, sometimes the 15 is called, by the way, the 15, another way for, another word for the 15 is called the multiple. Multiple. So the 15 is the multiple. So we're assuming here a 15 multiple for the business of pizzeria. Okay? Now, how does this work in the real world? So let me show you some few PE ratios in the real world, just to kind of so you understand how this works. Let's look at Apple computers, and today is April the 20th. So these numbers are April the 20th. Earnings per share for Apple is $12.60. So Apple earns $12.60 as earnings per share. This is called the trailing earnings per share. Don't worry about what trailing is. We just we're going to assume it's earnings per share. And and right now investors are paying almost 22 times those $12.60. What does it mean 22? Let me get you a calculator here. And see and show you what we're doing here. So, earnings per share is $12.60, and investors think they should pay 22 times, 21.99, 22, times 22 times the earnings per share. And this 277.2 is the price oops, is the price of Apple stock today. So, what does that mean? It means investors are willing to pay for the future earnings of $12.60 22 times. Let's move to Netflix. Let's see what Netflix looks like. Netflix, they're earning $4.13 per share, way less than Apple. However, however, investors are willing to pay the P.E. ratio 100 and almost six times. So for every dollar Netflix earn, investors, they think they should pay $106 per earning. Why? Because Netflix has a lot of future opportunities. And what they're saying now, everybody is watching Netflix, they're gonna have more subscribers. Therefore, the potential for Netflix is high. Therefore, the stock price for Netflix is $437. How do you compute this? Take 413 times 105.93. What we can say, we can say that investors are paying more for Netflix than Apple. We would say too, that Netflix is more expensive, but Netflix has higher growth. Now, actually, tomorrow Netflix is reporting their numbers. And if they don't report good growth numbers, well, Netflix, it's going to be hammered. Because the expectation is more people are subscribing for Netflix, but that's a story for a different discussion. Let's look at Google. Google earnings per share is $49.16 per share. It's more than Apple, more than Netflix. Investors are willing to pay 25 times, 25, let's say 25 and a half times the earnings per share. This is the multiple. If we take the earnings times the multiple will give us the price of Google. So simply put, when the company earns more and the future looks bright for the company, your multiple is higher, therefore your stock price is higher. It's all based on your earnings. Earnings drive drives your stock price. The more you earn, and this should make sense, the more you earn, the more you are worth. But we also we have to take into account 
that what is your opportunity to grow? So if you have a future opportunity, if we look at Amazon, Amazon is the same thing. They have a lot of opportunities. Therefore, investors are paying a lot for Amazon. So this is a nutshell, is a, is a quick explanation about earnings per share that I can spend literally hours about this. The third ratio that we're going to look at is dividend yield. And what is basically dividend yield? Tells us the annual amount of cash dividend distributed to common shareholders relative to the stock price. When we say yield, it means a percentage. We're looking at a percentage. So simply put, the formula look, looks something like this. How much annual you will get cash dividend per share? How much you get per share in cash dividend? We'll divide this by the market value per share on, on, a, on a particular date to find the yield, a percentage. Again, let's look at Apple. Apple pays Apple pays three dollars and eight cent per share. So if Apple pays three dollars and eight cent per share, so if we take three point oh eight divided by the market price today, two seventy six point nine three, their dividend yield one point oh nine. So if you buy Apple share today, okay, and you keep getting a div the dividend, which is three dollars and eight cent today, the dividend could change, but let's assume it's three dollars and eight cent. Well, you're earning from dividend alone because that dividend is distributed to you, to you annually around 1.09. Now, if we look at AT&T, AT&T pays $2.08 per year. Well, if you receive $2.08 and you're going to be paying for the stock $30.98, this is the AT&T stock, you would yield 6.66%. That's pretty good yield. 6.66% is a high return, is a high return on your stock. I would say AT&T is a great stock today based on their dividend yield alone. You buy it today, they keep paying dividend, you're going to be earning 6.6%. Just going to give you another example. A Microsoft, they pay $2.04 per share. That's how much they pay. 2.04 the price of microsoft is 175 dollars and six cent the that's going to yield to 1.14 very similar to apple 1.14 percent so which one is the best dividend yield obviously at&t is the best dividend yield now if you wait for tomorrow and at&t drop to 28 right obviously the dividend yield will go up or if you wait for tomorrow and at&t goes up to 35 dollars now if you take two dollars and eight cent divided by 35 the dividend yield goes down so you want to catch the stock when it's down but if the dividend yield is too high you have to be suspicious it means the company may be getting into trouble that's why their stock is going down relative to their annual cash dividend because if they cannot pay the dividend how good is the dividend yield and if they cannot generate the cash if you like this recording please like it share it put it in playlist um, if you're interested in additional recordings, please visit my website, farhatlectures.com, and you'd learn more about these topics. You will supplement your accounting education, study for the CPA exam, succeed, good luck, study hard, and stay safe during those coronavirus days. In the next session, we would look at the book value per share.